Well guys, I got some pretty bad news when it comes to the Survivalist series. Unfortunately, this server is going to be moving providers, which means our character cannot go with it. There's nobody on the server anymore. This is the final day the server is going to be live until it's shut down. So this is one last time that we can enjoy this character before we have to start a brand new one for the series. I will be continuing this series on the colony, however. Um, I feel like it's a great server group. I mean, it was... We had our camp and this character alive for weeks, uh, if not just about a month now, uh, without having any persistency problems or any issues uh, whatsoever. I am a, a little bummed out though because we were just able to make our natural leather storage vest. And, um, you know, that's just really shitty timing. So, you know, not much that we can do about it. I was thinking about, like, killing our character myself by, like, jumping off some sort of, like, bridge or something like that but honestly i don't think i'm going to i think we're just gonna let this guy go and uh, start a brand new character on the new server and uh hopefully uh things will kind of work out a lot better and we were able to find a barrel you know and uh try to get all those supplies at a decent uh, speed well, guys it looks like we're gonna have some new beginnings unfortunately the server that was hosting my survivalist series changed service providers. So they didn't actually wipe their persistency on the server, they just went to a more reliable server location. Uh, so uh, we are going to have to start from scratch, uh, meaning that everything that has happened from episode 1 to 10 uh, has now been lost. But we've learned a lot since we started this survivalist series. And Simbio, actually the guy who donated the first barrel, uh, said that he actually put a barrel in the same location. So if I wanted to go back there and grab it, uh, then I will. So obviously, I think the first goal for us today is to go back uh, to that barrel location, uh, get that sorted out, and then begin the process of uh, snaring rabbits just like before. Um, it's not going to be that difficult for us, but we also have to get our starting supplies as well. So I'm actually going to take the boonie hat for now, um, but again, just like last time, I'm going to be pretty uh, careful on which cosmetics that I choose, uh, but for the most part, the, the jackets and the pants uh, and the backpack uh, that I initially use uh, isn't that big of a deal. Um, mainly, I would, I'm going to try to aim for an improvised backpack. I don't really want to be using a mountain backpack uh, or a taloon backpack. Uh, but if we can get an improvised backpack going and then potentially find a hunting pack, uh, then that would be really great. So, starting things off here, we do have our stone knife. Uh, we are, we got our long wooden stick. We're going to just kind of loot a couple of these buildings. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and then continue moving far north. Uh, to see if we can actually get that barrel. Uh, I will be a little bummed if that barrel is gone, but uh, honestly, um, it's not it, like this server is fresh, so it's only been live on the new provider for about five days now. So the chances of us actually finding a barrel on our own are pretty high. So if we do that, we'll definitely make note of it and uh, stash it uh, for later use as well, because one barrel is simply not enough to hold all the supplies that we need. So getting two barrels going again would be kind of ideal. So hopefully we can get that going again as well. We're starting over and it, it's nice to know that it was out of our control. Like it's it's not something that like I died by a player or got killed by a glitch. In fact, getting killed by a bug was actually probably my biggest fear out of everything when it comes to this series. Uh, I was expecting eventually we were just going to run into a random house and then just keel over and die. And that would have been a very terrible way uh, of ending this series. Um, well, I don't know. So many people have expressed interest in the survivalist. Um, other YouTubers have even mentioned that they really like it. Uh, lots of you guys uh, enjoy it. Uh, the vast majority of my YouTube audience really loves the survivalist. Uh, pretty much every video that I upload, people are asking me when the next survivalist episode is going live. Uh, almost constantly during my live stream, uh, people are wondering when the next survivalist episode is going live. So I'm really, I'm really happy that people enjoy this kind of content, and uh, I've, I've been learning a lot about you know what kind of. Uh, Oh no, that's not really what I wanted to make. Oh nice, because the rope was pristine, we were able to break it down, no problem. Cool, so we do have our bow now too. 
Um, but yeah, it is nice to see that people are open to watching different styles of gameplay. Uh, because, I don't know, I PvP all day on my live stream, and sometimes it is nice to really switch it up and not always be a complete savage uh, and going for the plays. Don't get me wrong, though, I really love PvP uh, in DayZ. It's probably one of the things that keeps me coming back uh, for more uh, over and over and over again. Uh, but uh, there is a whole side of this game that is relatively unexplored and it is nice to kind of showcase this part of the game that many just don't get to experience and I think uh, I've opened up the eyes of a lot of new Daisy players uh, and old experienced players who may like Daisy but just feel like they're bored with it and they want to try something a little bit different. Um, my recommendations for people who want to start up a character like this is to try to go on a roleplay server, like try to go to a roleplay server. Um, it doesn't even need to be like one with a whole lot of rules. So right now, like I said before, we're playing on the colony, but this could work really well on Daisy Underground as well. Um, servers that don't really have a whole lot of strict rules, but ones that encourage interactions and roleplay. Uh, I don't know if you would have a whole lot of positive success doing this series on a public server. I know that it, it is a lot easier for you to find barrels and build camps. Um, however, on the flip side, uh, you never know when your server is just going to stop completely and you're not going to be able to connect to it. The, the lot of, most of the bases that I built in DayZ uh, on public hives have only lasted a week or two uh, and then for whatever reason the, either the server gets, the persistency gets wiped or the server itself actually goes down and doesn't come back up. So whenever you go to well established uh, servers like the Colony, like DayZ Underground, like Gents of Novo, uh, you're going to be on a server that uh, number one, doesn't wipe persistency very often. They rarely wipe persistency, and if they do, it's it's for a serious server stability issue. Um, and number two, you know that's going to be a well-funded server with a large community of players, uh, and then that way you know that it's not going to be going down anytime soon as well. I'm actually going to take this um, this axe just in case. We're going to need to get some chickens in Orvalets, I think and possibly make a fire. So I'm gonna carry this splitting axe just in case we don't find a cooking pot, gas stove, and tr like all that kind of jazz. Oh my God, look at this. Speak of barrels and we found one. Um, damn, I might grab that right away. Now this is not my favorite barrel in the world, but it is a barrel and it does not have holes poked in it, yes. There's a trumpet with a hunting scope. Alright, I'm going to hold on to this. Very awesome. Great find. Very difficult to stash a red and white barrel though inside of a pine tree, which is primarily where I hide my barrels. Um, but we can try. And hopefully we can do it. Or I might just throw it underwater somewhere. I don't know. But, but red and white is not the best. So if we can find another one, that would be great. But even if we find another one, I'm going to store this somewhere where it, we can come back for it later. I almost hear a car engine. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, we got our burlap bag, which is nice. Uh, we still haven't found like a propane canister or like a gas stove. But I'm going to need to make that that burlap, that backpack. So I'm actually gonna break down the bow and we're gonna make the backpack here. And why not actually split up this stick too and make the backpack even bigger. So now we actually have our improvised courier backpack um, and we're ready to go cut up some chickens. This is this kind of a uh this is starting out very similar to our first uh, series, actually, our first playthrough, because we sort of had like the leather jacket going the first time as well. Uh, I think here would be a nice little spot for us to just uh, sit down, build a small little campfire. Now let's sit down, we'll build a campfire, and then get this, uh, this meat cooking, just so we don't have to worry about our hunger. And eventually we will have to actually worry about our hunger soon. Whoa, that is a lot of fucking firewood. Not too sure what happened there. Um, also, another pro tip. I guess I've, I've talked about making a fire before, so it's not that big of a deal. 
Uh, but you actually can make a fire with just the stone. Like, you don't need anything else. Uh, you can just make a stick fire, but if you do have that axe, uh, then you can make a fire that would last a little bit longer. Really cool thing about the hand drill is last patch, it used up the entire hand drill. Uh, and you weren't able to use it anymore. It had one use and then it would go away. But in reality, if you made a hand drill kit, you'd be able to use it over and over and over again uh, for, you know, a couple dozen fires at least if you had a big enough uh, uh, fire board. I never bothered getting netting, but that's something that we can work on a little bit later. It's no big deal. Getting netting is actually not that hard uh, and is the easiest part of the ghillie suit process. So we'll eat the chicken. In fact, I'm going to move away from our fire a little bit, just so we don't overheat. We'll eat our chicken breast, and then we'll start continuing our march towards our camping location, which... Uh, it's a little far away. It's, it's not a short walk by any means, but we'll get there. Well, I just spent a good 15 or 20 minutes just trying to place this barrel down, but honestly, the red oil barrel is really 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 hard to hide uh so i don't expect this barrel to last too long uh, but i'm gonna go check to see what our other barrel is like to see if there's a better color and then see if we can hide uh, that barrel a whole lot easier but this one was really tough to hide uh, i probably have it in the best position i possibly could have put it in so far uh, and because we don't have a whole lot of time i'm hungry right now this is going to turn to orange very soon and i don't have any food sources and i don't have any way of actually um digging up a garden plot at the moment so we're gonna have to really go down probably head towards novo and uh really work on getting our food very soon but before we do that i'm gonna go and check the other barrel location to see if that is actually uh better okay so this barrel is a blue barrel um, there's actually a green barrel in there as well. Uh, he hid them underwater in a nearby location. Um, however, the green barrel is so deep into the pond that we can't actually get it. So I think that's why there's two barrels here. So we're going to grab this blue oil barrel. It's going to be a little bit easier to hide than the red and white one. So I'm going to go see if I can quickly hide this barrel in a better location. Uh, and then we need to quickly work on getting food or else we're going to start to starve to death. Oh yeah, we just were able to hide this barrel in an amazing location. Uh, so this is obviously, this is going to be my main barrel stash because the red white one, I'm going to keep well away from this one because it's just way too easy to spot. So I'm going to put all of my non-essential equipment inside of this barrel. Um, so we'll throw that in there. We'll throw some of the seeds. Um, we'll keep a stack of um, 20 feathers on us. Um, we, he actually did leave us a walkie-talkie, but I, again, I don't really know if the walkie-talkie is something I'm going to want to use. Um, another burlap bag. We're going to cut that into strips, combine those. Uh, we got our gas canister. I'm actually going to keep that on me. Um, and actually, I'm going to keep the four bones on me as well. So uh, now we're going to head down to a near village and then start looking for metal wire or a farming hoe. Um, there's a whole lot of things that we need to start looking for, but we also don't even have a bow yet, too. All right, my stomach grumbles, so we don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I'm going to run down to the Novo Industrial Area. Uh, I've looted this area a lot before, uh, and I might even get ambitious and move into the actual city of Novo uh, and try to find the supplies that we need all in one stop. So I'm looking for about four pieces of metal wire. Uh, we're looking for some leather repair kits. Uh, we're looking for probably like, I would say, two bags of garden lime, if possible. So that should be able to fill us all up, but primarily too, the cooking pot, the gas can or the gas stove um, is kind of ideal here and we're gonna have to probably kill a couple more chickens so we do have a lot of tasks to to kind of go through but the fact that we have both of our barrels down stashed a lot of our core essential supplies down stashed both barrels are in a position in pine trees where you cannot see them unless you run directly into the tree. That's the best way of actually hiding stashes, in my opinion, because um, one giveaway that I think a lot of people have is if people just put barrels down in the open, 
clearing of a forest. That's really easy to see. But not all pine trees are good at storing barrels. As soon as you can take a look at a pine tree and, and you can actually see the color pop out of the pine tree, you're basically screwed. You have to kind of fiddle around and, and basically just try to get it in a position where you cannot see it at all sides. And there are a few trees that are actually able to do that. Uh, you need to find very big pine trees though. The bigger the pine tree, uh, the bigger the limbs that stretch out and the more likely chance you're gonna be able to hide like a barrel. Like these, this one right here is really good because one of the branches, like you wanna find one where the branch almost dips into the ground. So this is not as good, but something like that. And then you would put it sort of next to the trunk of the tree and, and, and to the point where it's completely surrounded. It's kind of hard to explain, but I think you guys sort of get the idea. So not all pine trees are good. The bigger the pine tree, the better it's going to be able to hide your stash. In fact, I'm actually going to take a little bit of a dunk here and see if anybody has stored their barrel in here. Because this looks like a pretty crazy spot. So it's got lots of... This would be a really nice spot for a water stash kind of close to a spawning point um, it's got lots of these reeves but yeah if I was gonna do a novo barrel stash this would be one spot to consider but there's nothing in there so we'll continue to move on I spent a very short time looting around novo and into the city itself and we only really found two bags of garden lime uh, and lots of chickens uh, but I didn't have enough time to really do anything with the chickens or even make it back to my stash. So I'm going to be calling it for the night. If you guys are new to my channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. It will let you know whenever I make a new video. I upload daily videos on YouTube every morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So whenever you guys are having your breakfast, enjoying your coffee, definitely check out my YouTube channel uh, for some new daily content. And you guys can also check out my Twitch.tv channel. Uh, I go live every morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. A link to that is in the description box below. And I'll see you guys in episode 11. I predict that we're going to be doing some rabbit snares and maybe even hunting down some animals. See you guys.